Hi, I'm Vice Mayor Linda Bartz, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Helping Hands. Today, my guests are Christy Walsh and Frank Avila, and both of them are from Children's Home Society. Welcome to the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank I'm you. I'm very excited. We're going to be talking about National Adoption Month, yes. and we're going to be talking about runaway prevention. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty, pretty. I would like to say exciting, but it really a topic that's very, very important to all of us. Absolutely. So, Christy, talk to me a little bit about um, runaway prevention, other than locking a child in their room. I've tried it, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work, we don't recommend it. Um, but kids uh, for generations have run away from home, uh, sometimes because they don't like the rules of the home, sometimes they're running away from something that's not um, in their best interest, um, whether it be abuse or neglect, and sometimes they're running to something which isn't in their best interest either. True. Um, either way, they're putting themselves more at risk uh, being out on the streets and Runaway Prevention Month is to bring an awareness to our community, to the youth, to businesses, to um, community members uh, what we can do to help youth that are dabbling in these risky behaviors such as running away. Do you deal with the children or do you deal with the parents or do you deal with the whole family unit? The whole family unit, we deal with the youth individually, we deal with the parents individually, so it's all of the above. Um, most of our youth will end up coming to us, uh, a runaway youth, through our police departments or they could come to us through one of our safe place sites, the big yellow and black signs that are all over our community, they'll go to one of those sites and then eventually come to Wavecrest Shelter and we help that runaway youth work through why they ended up running away and um, helping them make better choices. What kind of services? The shelter provides short-term respite, um, emergency shelter services. While a youth is there, they receive daily counseling groups, individual counseling, um, they're transported to and from their schools. Um, they, the family will then receive aftercare services. And if we discover that there's any um, additional referrals that might need to be made, we'll make those while the child, child is still in care so that there's a continuum once they return to their home, to their family, to back into the community. Is there a typical age or is, it, is there a range? Yeah, our, the, the youth that we serve and see most often, 11 up to their 18th birthday, most of the youth that with runaway behaviors are uh, that 13 to 17 year old. By the time they're 17, they have friends that they can, you know, couch surf or they can, you know, find some place to go. But it's the, that 13 to 16 usually that are more likely to run away, but also don't have the life skills to survive and make some, some good choices. Which is why it's so important to get them into a safe place. Absolutely. Um, where they can get the needed services, counseling, whatever that may be, Absolutely. and the parents. And, and I'm sure that sometimes it's just a um, combining of the parents and the, and the child just to get to that point of saying, hey, this is where we're at. It probably isn't long term mm -hmm. um, and, and move forward. Because I, I think kids have run away as long as I can remember, um, and some much smaller, yes. where they pack the little suitcase or the little bag and they're out at the, uh, the street waiting for mommy to come and get them. Absolutely. It's, it's always the grass is greener on the other side until they realize that it may look that way, but there's weeds everywhere. Yeah, and, and they put themselves at risk in harm's way. So you just never know who that person, you know, help, help me find my puppy when that's somebody that's going to abduct them or, or put them in, in greater harm. So. Well, I had the opportunity to have um, some people from the safe place 
on the show a couple of months ago, and I found that so, so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because I've seen the signs forever. Yes. But I have to tell you, I had no idea what they were for. So it was very interesting to see that there is a place for our children to go if needed. And, and our youth in our community, at least here in St. Lucie County, um, in most of the middle and high schools are given cards and they all know what the safe place signs are all about. And they know that they can go to a safe place and ask for help and they won't be judged and, and they can get help fast. That's pretty interesting. So, it is. I understand that you're partnering up with the county, maybe the fire district. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about what you're doing there? We're excited. For the month of November, throughout the uh, St. Lucie County, all of the fire stations will have a green light bulb um, somewhere shown. And uh, nationally, it is leave the porch light on. And that green light bulb is a recognition for um, of the dangers and the awareness that need to take place of the runaway, runaway issues. So it's... Um, it's just nice to know that we have everybody recognizing that there we need to have an awareness. That's one real positive thing about our community, our county, mm -hmm. is that we all work so hard to uh, collaborate and support each other in so many of these areas. Mm -hmm. And our children have always been at the top yeah. for us to be looking at and trying to work with. So mm -hmm. I think partnering up with the, uh, the fire district, mm -hmm. what a great move. What a great it's move. Wonderful. And they are a safe place as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that they just are. rounds it all out. Absolutely. So is there anything else you can tell me about? Um, what just kind of... So if my child has run away, mm -hmm. You can call the Wavecrest Shelter okay. and say, I need some help. Even if that child is still on runaway status, we have staff that can help the family uh, through the steps. Call the police. When they come back, you can bring them up to the shelter pending bed availability. But we can then help the wheels moving so that that behavior doesn't continue, but more so the youth gets the help that they need. And um, so the contact the Wavecrest Shelter. We are um, uh, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. How many beds? We have 12 bed uh, capability and um, it's a revolving door because we are short term. You know, it, it may be a, a little wait sometimes, but not very long. And um, it's not very often we actually have to have a waiting list. So it's a good thing. We can help get those kids help fast. Well, that's very positive. Mm -hmm. That's very positive because that means many of the children that you're servicing mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to a bed. Right, right. Um, and services can help them and help the road to it's repairing all, the family dynamic. It's all about prevention and we're at the front end so we don't, you know, kids that are running away are usually then breaking into homes. They're getting into other mischief as well. So we really want to prevent them from becoming involved with whether it be Department of Juvenile Justice or um, further entrenched in any of the other systems. So we are prevention. That's fabulous. I'm so okay. glad to hear that you're out there and you're doing that. It's been successful. Good. So. Well, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And it's all about, you know, making our children safe or safer. Absolutely. So, And Frank, you're here because I know, I know you. Yes. So I know that you have been working with adoption for a long, long time. Yeah, about seven years now. Wow. Yeah. Um, talk to me. I th National Adoption Month Yes. is in November. November. Correct. Yes. Uh, uh, many years ago, one of our wonderful presidents declared uh, in November as uh, National Adoption Month. And uh, what we do is we try to raise awareness of, uh, recognize first of all those wonderful families that do um, adopt uh, children out of the foster care system, as well as trying to increase awareness of the need still for more adoptive homes in our community. Uh, and we do that through having uh, 
days in the different courts where we try to have several adoptions happen on one specific day throughout the four counties that we serve, including St. Lucie County, uh, having proclamations at the different governmental entities, uh, you know, designating November as National Adoption Month. Uh, we actually have an, an, a National Adoption Day celebration event that takes place every year where we basically have a, a free picnic, so to speak, for these families and the public at large can attend as well. And it just allows us to really recognize, again, those families that have adopted. We provide them with something to eat, children's activities, live entertainment, guest speakers, etc. And it's just a, you know, a two, three hour event where we can just, again, thank those people for doing the amazing thing that they do, which again is to end up raising or being a forever family for someone else's child. So you're handling typically the children that may have been, and I, and I may be wrong on this, but through DCF or yes. um, the foster care programs. Exactly. So do you actually um, match the child to the parents? <laughs> I well, mean, we, if I'm a parent looking to adopt. Yes, if you were a parent looking to adopt, what what these folks typically do is folks that want to adopt a child from the foster care system, no matter which area of the state they live in or which state throughout the United States, they, they have to go through a, a, a class of some kind. Here locally, they would go contact Hibiscus Children's Center, and Hibiscus Children's Center would... Um, uh, do what they call MAP class, which is an acronym for Model Approach to Partnerships and Parenting, and it is a, re a state-required 30-hour class that all foster or adoptive families must complete before becoming a foster or adoptive parent. Once that has taken place and they write what they call the family's home study, which is basically the book about them, that means that they are now ready to become an adoptive parent. At that point, generally what happens is, well, not only does Hibiscus send an electronic copy of their home study directly to us, because we are the local adoption agency, but then that family can be their own recruiter, which means going out on the Children's Home Society websites, going out on other statewide websites like uh, Explore Adoption, which is a Florida you know, website. We could uh, have them go to the Heart Gallery of America.org website, which you know shows kids again from all across the, st uh, the state and the country, and they can inquire about sp a specific child or sibling group that way, and then just email uh, their home study to us, and at that point, we would then try to look at their home study and debate whether they may or may not be a good match for the child because one of the things that we do is we try to find families for the children as opposed to finding children for the family. For the family. So that family's strengths must match the needs of those specific children or sibling groups. And these kids tend to be between the ages of 7 and 17, uh, siblings who we want to keep placed together, minority or biracial children perhaps, uh, kids with physical and emotional or behavioral issues and chances are if they're in foster care they probably have one of those three things. Um, obviously there are sometimes younger children available but as biological families try to complete their case plan sometimes things may last a little bit longer within the judicial system and that newborn isn't going to be available perhaps for adoption until they're two, three, four years old. Um, so we tend to get the kids as, as they're a little bit older. Uh, very rarely uh, do we have, a, say, a two-year-old child just ready for adoption. That might, that might be a child that could potentially be adopted by the maybe the current foster home they're in, or maybe an aunt or an uncle wants to adopt that child. But when they come over to us in our adoption unit, they are 100% eligible and available for adoption, meaning that their biological parents' rights have been 100% and completely ter terminated, yes. Well, you know, a, a two-year-old is nice, very active, um, but there are way too many kids that need homes and need love. I don't know, a child's a child. Um, and whether they are your biological child or not, you know, you run into issues as they grow all the time. Um, so I, I, I have a hard time 
thinking that there's no, it's so easy to me to transfer mm -hmm. that love, whether it is a biological child or not a biological child. Um, and, and maybe that's because I've raised my kids, and so I know that they all come with their own set of challenges. Sure. I'll put it that way. Do. So any, any child that comes in the house, you expect to have some kind of a challenge. And certainly when we have the services that we do in this county, there are a lot of places that you can go for help to jump those hurdles and get through those challenges. Um, just a quick question, if I were to go to you and I was to adopt a child and that child might have, let's say, uh, a physical, um, emotional, mental disability, do you, uh, uh, you offer the services to help those parents along? We actually have on staff, and we're very fortunate because I don't know that every single agency across the state or country has this, but we do have what we uh, call an adoption therapist or adoption counselor on staff. If, if they adopted that child at age five, for example, and that child is now 17 and acting up, they could still contest contact us back and uh, we could ref, you know refer the family or work with the family however however they need and, and it's really exciting because again adopting a child from the foster care system is so much different than adopting an infant or a newborn there, there is no fee there's no fee to adopt a child from the foster care system there is a monthly subsidy that would come to care help to care for that child up until that child turns the age of uh, 18 there is um, free Medicaid up till the child turns 18 and there is free tuition to any Florida state school um, and and some other you know, income tax credits and whatnot so there's a lot of benefits to adopting a child out of the foster care system that some folks may not even be aware of so you don't that whole theory of you have to be wealthy to adopt not true at all Amazing. not true at all Amazing. The capacity to love and care for a child is what it takes. See, to me, that's the easy part. Safe, stable home is what it takes. That's the easy okay. part. Yeah. But that's, you know. Christy and Frank, it was a pleasure to have you here today. I have to tell you, you opened up my eyes a lot. Uh, certainly, a lot of facts about the adoption um, situation that I had no idea about and preventing runaways and what you do for runaways and it's just a small piece of how much that we have out there so I want to thank you for being here and I want to thank you for all you do thank and you. all you do for our kids out there and and let people know that if they need you they need to be calling Wavecrest or they need to be calling you Frank and saying hey we're looking for a child and we want one at home now so thank, thank you, you for having so. us thank you my pleasure and we'll be right back after this message Thank you.